Okay. Ah, perfect. So now we went on to the dimensionality reduction and in the exercise you saw that there might be uh, something, a batch correction that you might want to do, something you want to correct for. So you might want to move to do some integration as it's called in, in Surat and then come back to some dimensionality reduction to see if whatever you did here has been uh, correctly done such that you now have a beautiful art piece, as we said, a visual picture that is nice enough and that you can make good conclusions about for your uh, paper. So this is what we will be talking right now. Let me put that full screen maybe first, just because it's better. Okay, so, and just put this up, sorry. So why, why should we integrate? And here is a picture um, uh, from a colleague. So this is very much what we sometimes see uh, in some data set where you would have several donors or patients, for instance, and uh, everything would cluster together according to the donors and not according to the condition you really want to, to visualize. So you would not have cell type 1, cell type 2 that cluster together, but really clusters made out of each donors. And in each donors uh, clusters, you still can see that there are subclusters. So probably these would represent cell types, but visually it's not uh, uh, appealing for a picture to put in a paper to be able to make, uh, to, to draw the attention to, to some important conclusions you want to make. So this might be the situation you encounter. Then another situation you might actually encounter is that uh, your two conditions that you want to, to, to compare. So you might have um, sick uh, mice and healthy mice, for instance, they would uh, drive the, the lower uh, dimensionality reduction picture. So the, for instance, here it's a Tisney that would clearly separate healthy and sick uh, patients, but would not actually group together according to the cell type. And this is what you would like to represent. Um, in the Surat tutorial, they are actually also talking about a different integration problem that you might have is that you have sequenced cells on different platforms, same type of cells, and that you would like to group them together. And this is what they are um, putting in their tutorial. So here you would see the um, unintegrated uh, picture of the uh, uh, the TSNA representation of the unintegrated uh, data, where you will see that everything groups together according to, um, uh, to uh, sequencing technology. And what you would like to have at the end is an integrated version. Um, this is actually also something I had in my hands where I had data that was uh, collected from uh, in, in Switzerland from uh, a lab that was uh, doing the 10X uh, sequencing and uh, their colleagues uh, from the same data set, their colleagues in Sweden decided to go for SmartSec. And so they decided to group together those two data sets. And what was nice about that is that at the end in the 10x um, data set, in, with our, our colleagues from here, we were able to figure out uh, rare cells. And in the SmartSec data set, it was one cell only. <laughs> which was having uh, that rare cell type. So at the end, we could still benefit from the SmartSec together with the 10X because we had actually the more in-depth version with SmartSec and we had the rare cell types with the 10X. Uh, this was just a parenthesis, but here is what we want to understand is how to go from uh, this picture to the magic that happens here where suddenly everything is grouped together. And uh, as I said, integration can be useful in many different um, tech, in many different var um, variables. So let's say you might have some technical variability. You have difference in library preparation, difference in sequencing technology, maybe difference in people that handled the data. So this would be what we call technical variability. And this technical batch effects is not something you would like to visualize. So you would not want to visualize a group of cells that were handled by your colleague and a group of cells that were handled by you. This is not what you want to put uh, as a visual output in, in your uh, paper. 
You might also have what I, I said are uh, more biological variability. This is what I showed in the pictures before. So for instance, um, patient differences, this is, or sample differences, this is what we oftentimes see, or um, even evolution. So we there, there were some papers that came out where they analyzed cross species. So they had mouse and they had human and they wanted to group the findings in mouse and human together on one picture that summarize it all. And this is also something what uh, happens sometimes. So these are the biological uh, batch effects that might also confound your uh, single cell an analysis. So for, uh, this is uh, the, the thing that uh, also Kert emphasized yesterday is that you would like to have a uh, balanced cohort so you would have you want to have a uh, not confounded design so you, you do not want to have batch that will match exactly uh, your uh, your variable of interest so this is something we already discussed so good experimental design does not remove batch effect but it prevents them from biasing your results this is what we said and which is important to emphasize and again, here is the picture of the single cell RNA tools. And there is a category called integration. And as you can see, there are 200 and something. So as always, we will not discuss them all. However, with integration, what, what is nice is that many tools function on the same general principle, the general concept. And so I will try to, in, in, to describe to you the general concept and then many of the different integration tools uh, would function, function on that general concept. So here are a list of some of them which uh, are or were popular. Most of them are still quite used. So there is MNN, which is quite used. Then there is the, from starting from Surat version three on the version of integration that they used. And then there is one which I want to emphasize because it's functioning a little bit differently, which is Stakas, and has been developed uh, locally by colleagues of ours. That's why I make a bit of publicity. So these are the ones I would like to discuss because they are very popular. And here is, generally speaking, how most of these integration tools function. So what they try to do is first find corresponding cells across data sets. And what corresponding cells means is how uh, the different methods of integration would, would differ. So they will try to compute a certain distance between the cells in a certain space. So let's give a small example. It could be, for instance, that you first project the cells into a UMAP. And on the UMAP, you would take a Clegian distance to tell the distance between the cells across the different uh, batches that you have. And so this might be a way of starting an integration. You, you, you say what are the corresponding cells across your data set. Then you would like to compute a data adjustment based on these corresponding cells. And here again, the, the different methods could differ in how they would compute this adjustment that they need to do. So it's like a correction vector that you compute of how to, to make the cells closer that should be close. And then they apply that adjustment. So this is generally speaking how it functions and how the distance is computing, in which space you are in and how the adjustment functions. This is how the different integration tools would actually differ. So let's take the MNN first, the mutual nearest neighbors first, and let's describe how they are functioning. So uh, here, here is how they are functioning. So exactly as I said, first you have your two batches or more, but let's say you have two batches. Uh, this might be the cells that you have measured with SmartSec and these might be the cells you have measured with 10X. What you want to understand is which are the cells that correspond to each other or, or let's say that should be close to each other um, uh, in your final um, picture. And what you do is that you take uh, a pairing, as I said, you find corresponding cells, and then you apply a correction vector and put them together in the, in the last space. So how it's really working is like that. So first you go to your um, dimension reduction in the mutual nearest neighbors, it's uh, TSNI. And so what you do is that you try to compute which are the closest neighbors to, uh, um, in terms of a, 
Euclidean distance. So here in this example, and it's a, a, a dummy example, you can see that you have blue cells here and red cells here. So it's really clear separation and clear batch effect. And what you want to do is to find uh, neighbors. So cells that are, should be close to each other or, the, or that are close to each other in the dimensional reduction space. So as you can see here, the corresponding cells are, the, the, are, are these two. So the first thing you do is that for each of the cells in your batch number one, you would compute the, the closest neighbors in the batch number two. So for this cell highlighted here, you have these three neighbors and the number of neighbors you choose is a parameter that you will um, put in your, in your method. So here I choose three, three neighbors. So these are the three closest points in the blue uh, batch for this point, this red point here. You do the same thing for all the points in the blue in the blue batch. So you have this point in the blue batch. You will select in the red batch the three closest neighbors, which are these three. And a mutual nearest neighbor would be just a an, an, um, pair of cells that have called each other as being a neighbor. And so these two cells have called each other as being a neighbor. So this will be one of the pairings that you will use. Now, these two cells here would actually also pick each other as neighbors, right? So these two cells will be another uh, pair, mutual nearest neighbor pair that you would consider in your, in your data set. And MNN, how it functions, the method uh, has been described like that. So first you need to figure out what are all the, the pairs that you have. And then you will calculate a pair specific batch correction vector, which will be just the following, which will be, you take the expression of the genes in your, uh, in your uh, uh, cell A, and you subtract the, the expression of the gene in the cell B. And you do that for all the mutual nearest neighbor pairs. And so you will get several different vectors. As I said here, for instance, for that point, you have this pair and this pair, which is considered to be a mutual nearest neighbor. And so for all of the pairs that you have, you will cal cal calculate this pair specific batch correction vector. And then you would use a, a sort of function, which is doing here a, a sort of average of those. And uh, this average would be uh, giving you the correction vector that you have calculated for each cell. And this is what you will then apply to change from your original gene expression to the corrected batch um, effect uh, gene expression. And this is what you will then do. And you do that for both of the batches for sure. And then you merge that into a final picture. So then here is, they, they will show you how MNN worked. And um, this is an example in, in this paper here. Um, where they will advertise that MNN works well. Here you can see the first picture and you can see that the batches were here actually data sets. So these were data sets that were, uh, where, where data was collected separately. And you can see that what is clustering mainly together is the, the data set itself. So you can see the green, which is the GSE81076 is clustering together. The red ones has, has several specific cluster, but is clustering also mainly to get together. And at the end, if you do the MNN correction, this is the picture you obtain. So uh, now you don't have clustering anymore that is dependent on, um, on the, the data set. Uh, and if you color here actually by cell type, you can see that at the end, the, what clusters together is according to cell type, not according to data set. So this is what you would like to achieve to have a picture of something that you can then discuss in a paper. Now we will be mainly using Surat. So for sure, I would like to discuss to you how Surat works. And so again, it uses this, um, this same, uh, principle of finding corresponding cells, computing a data adjustment, and then apply this adjustment. But just the, the space in which it calculates the anchors and in which it calculates the, the data adjustment is not the same as the MNN. 
what it first computes is a correlation co um, component analysis, sorry. And correlation component analysis in era, instead of PC, PCA is actually grouping cells together according to their correlation scores. And here you can see that uh, this is how it looked like in PCA, and this is how it looks like in the correlation component analysis um, uh, field. And what it then does is a sort of a, first a normalization, so which is the L2 normalization. So this is what it does. And at the end, in this space here, it will calculate, it will find the anchors, so the corresponding cells. Just like the mutual nearest neighbors, it just has a different way of calling it. It calls it anchors. And this is what it calculates calculates here. So which are the cells in batch one or batch purple that correspond to cells in batch green? And at the end, it does exactly the same thing. Uh, it will uh, again calculate exactly this. So uh, a pair specific batch correction, but here instead of MNN, instead of gene expression, what you will take is the component, uh, the, the L2 normalized uh, correlation component uh, number and compute the distance between those two. And then you do exactly the same and average over all the pairs or anchors that you have. And this is what you will then use to, to calculate the, the correction for each of the batches and then you merge the two. In Surat, how it's functioning, it's called integrate data and find integration anchors to find the, the anchors um, in the in, in Surat. This is how it works. I don't know why I went back. Okay, so here is just um, Surat would advertise how well it works on, on this data set where um, you can see that uh, they managed to um, merge technology where here you have these six different protocols. So you do have also SmartSec and 10X. And you can see also that they try to merge species, so human and mouse. And at the end, you can see that it's merging very well together, except for this cell type, which is us in our cells, which are specific apparently to human, not the biologist. So I do believe what I see. Uh, and uh, you can see that was what was what is correlating, what is um, clustering together is according to cell type. And this is what you would like to achieve because this is what you would like at the end to discuss if a gene is high in a cell type, et cetera. And this is what you would like to visualize. So at the end, integration is uh, used in order to have a visual representation that is enabling you to show conclusions you would like to make on your data set. So it's a nice picture where what you see is according to the cell types and not according to the variability that you have inferred, which is a technical, technical variability or a biological variability that you would like to remove. This is not the something you would use for differential gene expression where you would like to include those as covariates and not include the, the, the correction vector that you have calculated as um, numbers that you would like to infer to a differential gene expression um, tool. This is important to remember. Uh, and why is it so? Because these are quite harsh. The numbers that you get at the end are not really representative anymore of what's happened happened at the beginning. And you gave more power to the, the batch that you considered than um, to, the, to the biology that you really have. So in my opinion, it is always better to go back to original data and then include, for instance, technology or species as covariates uh, when you will model the, the, the differential gene expression you would like to perform. And in that sense, you give the same power to all of your, uh, all of your covariate effects. And this is for, for me the, the way to, to go. Uh, um, this is something else is that uh, Surat enables you to use that, uh, that um, theory of integration to actually do what they call label transfer. And how it works is that uh, you have uh, your data set that you don't know, it's all in black, you don't know which cell types you have, and you have a reference data set that you know is a good author and has well annotated its, its cells, and you would like to use that as a reference to try to annotate your cells. 
what it will do is that it will use the technique of integration and, and put the cells to closer to their to their anchors let's say to to merge the two data set and with that we'll use it to understand what are the cell types that you have in your data and will therefore annotate your query so meaning your data set with the reference that you would have uh, inferred this is what they call label transfer and uh, they claim it, it's working super nicely. Uh, it does, however, it is quite um, computationally intense and quite long to run. So depending on the size of your reference and the size of your data set, it might not be the, the best option, but this is something Tanya will discuss at some point today, right? Or tomorrow. Yes. And uh, so <laughs> I will let her give uh, you the full details of that. And just at the end, uh, I want to mention Stakas because it's working a little differently, a little bit differently because it's semi-supervised. So at the end, you um, not only use uh, um, uh, an unsupervised method where you just click and it gives you the result, you also give a sort of knowledge about the clusters such that if you ever have uh, anchors between two different cell types, it will remove those. And so it's uh, like, a, yeah, a supervised version of what Surat has implemented, and it could be useful for you in case you would like uh, to use that. So it's called subtype anchor correction for alignment in Surat to integrate single cell on ASIC data, fine. But what it really does is just uh, use Surat by um, removing some anchors between cells that are from the, uh, a different cell type in order to um, make it a little bit more precise. And here is how they would show um, how it's performing better because they have removed some, some links between cells that are of different cell type and that's where they pretend it's working a little bit better. And here in this example, you are definitely convinced by it. And so in case you do already know the cell types you have, you do already have some uh, annotation you really would want to go to Stakas to merge two data sets, I guess, but up to you, just for you to know that it exists and how it's working. So I guess that was my last slide on integration and it again. So integration, when is it useful? Is it useful in order to have a corrected table of expression that you can then use for differential gene expression of data coming from two or more sources? Is it useful when you want to obtain a visual representation of data coming from two or more sources, or is it both of the above? Two more people need to decide. Some people change their minds. <laughs> I think I can soonish close it. Yes, so most of you said it's for visual representation. Some people said it's both of the above. I try to emphasize that you should not use it for differential expression because it is actually giving more power to the batch that you have than to the biology that you're trying to assess. So it's quite harsh and it, it might be masking some of the things that are really there in terms of differential gene expression. So I would recommend that you rather go for the original data set uh, and use the batch as a covariate such that you give the same power to whatever sick versus healthy you're comparing or whatever uh, and to the batch and not give more power to the batch correction. But this is uh, maybe more of a personal opinion.